Hi guys, it's Rory from Edge of the Box, mentoring here. I'm with my good friend Thomas Beattie over in Singapore. We just kind of explore Tom's career in football and where he finds himself now. So Tom, just a little bit about yourself now. Um, so my name's Thomas Beattie, I played professionally in the UK. Um, and I played in uh, Asia, Canada, America. I finished my career four years ago, playing in Asia. Um, I had an injury, a skull injury, which ended my career a little bit prematurely. But yeah, now I have a little bit of a different life. So kind of uh, made that transition outside of football. Excellent. If we go back to the start of your career, so we're looking at your formative years, 16 to 18, can you tell me anything, where were you, which club were you attached to? I, s- I signed for Hull at uh, 9, and I signed the YTS 15, 16, yeah. I left the club at 19, um, which was a pretty difficult period for me, I was kind of going through that growing spell and trying to figure out who I was yeah. personally on an identity level, and so it was a little bit of a, a rough time for me physically, mentally, emotionally, but I uh, yeah, left the club at 19, 20, and then I actually went to America to do a scholarship in uh, South Carolina. Uh, can we explore the rejection you might have felt after leaving the hometown club, yeah. nine years made, two months of my journey in Preston? How did that feel? What were the emotions? Um, mine was a little bit of a strange scenario because I, was, I had a year left on my contract. Right. Um, I knew it was going to be difficult for me to break into the first team regardless, but I was, I was kind of in an unhappy space. Um, I, I was kind of struggling with doing something for so long. Yeah. It was all I knew. Um, and I kind of fell into this little bit of a rut where I almost fell out of love with the game, but I still had a year left on my contract, but yeah, again, I knew, I knew it was going to be difficult for me to break into the first team. So I was kind of balancing various emotions around that, but it was difficult for me coming out of the club regardless. Um, I think just doing something I've done for so long. It was all I knew from yeah. eight, nine years old, right? So it was, it was all I ever loved. And so I think coming out of that and to do anything else would have been overwhelming. It was a difficult process, right? Yeah. yeah. So then moving on to the American, did you have anyone at that time who you could turn to outside of the club, maybe outside the family as well? Is there anyone on the periphery that you turned to you to trust it? Not really as such. I didn't really have I didn't really feel like I had much support in that, um, in that whole process. I was kind of going into everything blind, obviously. There's no, there's no right or wrong, obviously, but I didn't really feel like there was much of a blueprint for me. Yeah. And, uh, and I, sh- I struggled like, in terms of what was next, what, how, how was things going to pan out for me outside of that environment I was in. Was I going to go on to play again? Was I going to study? Was I going to completely take a different career path? These are the obviously questions I was that was marinating on, but at that age, I was again still trying to figure myself out, so that was quite a difficult process for me. Yeah. Um, a little bit of support from the PFA at times, but um, again, it was, uh, I think, I feel like coming through that process quite, quite uh, as an individual, yeah. quite solo at times. It's the same sentiment, everyone seems to be echoing that you are not alone, and I think that's why this mention for me is important, I'm sure you can see a value in it. For, yeah, definitely. For someone to step into that void, neutral, unbiased give you, a, a, a guess, like a, a clear pathway and the blueprint that you talked about. Yeah, definitely beneficial. So moving forward to America, obviously we know that you're going to have a long professional career. How was that, that experience? What did it do for your identity when you're over there? Did you reform yourself, confidence? Yeah, that was, that was a really important period for me. It was quite pivotal in that, um, I guess I, I was at an age where I was kind of still, f- again, figuring things out. And I think I was growing into myself. Yeah. Um, in many ways, and so that was, it was a really, I, I enjoyed that process, I, I recommend it to anyone, obviously got an education out of it, yeah. which went on to, to kind of um, benefit me in some of the things I'm doing now, not necessarily directly after I graduated, I went on to play again, obviously, but I think the whole process for me was, um, it was a self-searching process in many ways, I found the love of playing again yeah. in America, yeah. again, coming out of an environment I've been in for so long, going to a completely yeah. environment for me it was fresh, it was a fresh challenge, it was, it was new and exciting. And yeah, I, I, I kind of reveled in that, it was uh, enjoyable for me. And I would rec- again, I recommend it to anyone. I didn't really know how that process was going to go at the time, completely going in blind, but looking back now it was, it was really pivotal, pivotal for me. Yeah. And I think for me, having done academics and sport as well combined, how did you find that fit? So I've spoken to some ex-pros who all I ever was as a footballer, that's all I ever wanted to be. Obviously, you combine the two and then go back into professional football. Where did you see yourself in that? Were you a student? Were you an athlete? Were you B 
bit of both. What, what yeah, you? it was just again a strange scenario, and that obviously the typical trajectory in England is obviously you come through school, you finish, you sign your YT, and then you kind of progress through that uh, through that kind of process. But from going back into into education, at first was pretty difficult, but I was always pretty academically inclined. So for me, it was it went it weren't too much of a I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed learning and stuff. Yeah. So for me personally, it was I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, I quite enjoyed it. Quite challenging to balance both. It's obviously being full time athlete and full time student is yeah. pretty, pretty demanding. Yeah, but again, I was always quite. I threw myself into it. I always knew. I always had this understanding that football was one part of me, and I didn't want it to be my whole identity. I had other interests outside of football, which I think. You know, pushed me to walk to, to be creative and explore and question certain things about the world. I think sometimes when you're in that bubble of an athlete, you become so naive to everything what's going on around you. Yeah. And uh, and so yeah, I think going to America kind of made me a little bit more aware that although I am an athlete, now I'm a student. There is a, this other world going on outside of it. I just had no idea. Of it. Yeah, you're in that bubble. Exactly right. Absolutely. So yeah. And then I think talking about your career from America, you graduated with a degree, back to the professional game. And then can you talk to me, obviously I'm kind of taking a negative slant, but about the rejection you went through three career, because we all yeah. like footballers, it's short contracts, you moved around the world, that's yeah. a different experience than most. How was it? Um, I think at, at times it was, it was quite lonely. Yeah. Like, I think there's so many emotions that kind of go, that you experience as an athlete. I think sometimes people think it's just this, you're just this physical thing. Mm. Um, it's almost like a commodity. Yeah. And you kind of a cog in a wheel, you go and do a job, but obviously there's so much more behind it, like underneath the hood. And yeah. yeah, so many different feelings of loneliness and again, rejection, how, 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 how would you handle that? For me personally, I was always quite uh, stubborn right. in that like, if ever I kind of got some negative feedback or I got anything that was not as complimentary as I wanted or the right the right answers I wanted. I would kind of use that as a fuel yeah. in a way. Um, I, I used to get a little bit angry and then be like, okay. Yeah. Um, again, I was always quite aware that you know one man's trash is another man's treasure. Yeah. It's a sport of opinions, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I was quite aware of that, but it still didn't take away from the fact that at times when you get the nerves, yeah. and know, you know these these things are difficult. Yeah. Um, I was almost my own worst enemy at yeah. times because. I think I had an idea of what I wanted, but it was never really going to be attainable. Or it was never going to be perfect in the way I yeah. wanted it. And so, I think in my mind, I I wanted I planned certain scenarios, certain clubs, certain countries, and bringing that to fruition or manifesting that in real life was almost impossible. Yeah. You know, because you never know how it's going to go. Right. So for me, that process was such an unknown so that when it actually came to it, it was never really what I wanted. Um, so yeah, again, struggled at times with being in other countries by yourself, yeah. learning new languages, learning you know, new cultures. And I was in Albania for a short period of time in Norway and struggled um, to adapt. And I look back now and think it's something I could walk into and do now. But yeah. at the time, it was it was not it weren't comfortable for me. And again, football was a vehicle for me in many ways, but kind of transplanting myself in another country alone was. Yeah. Was difficult, yeah, and again, obviously dealing with dealing with certain emotions around maybe not breaking into the first team, kind of sometimes in the reserves, sometimes told you're not in the squad, sometimes um, sometimes starting these kind of managing these emotions at, at times was, was an absolute roller coaster. I'm sure it consumed me yeah. massively. It, it has to, and now it does. If you're still back in England playing non league football, it consumes. Yeah, so being on your own. Do you believe that? Someone like myself, I guess, a mentor at that stage, not an agent who's got best interest in the money that you're going to pull in, but someone maybe a bit more neutral would have benefited you at any point? Definitely. I think, like, just having some kind of outlet to be able to um, seek a little bit of support, advice, guidance, reassurance, a lot of it is just so unknown when you're at a certain age, right? Yeah. You kind of go through this period of figuring out what's going on in the world, where am I, where do I fit in yeah. in terms of as a professional, which is all I've ever wanted to do, how does that uh, that path look like for me? It's such an unknown question like that. I think at times I struggled to really see what was next, and I think that questioning made me question myself at times. 
But I think having a lot, yeah, just kind of some uh, source of support and, um, you know, place where you can seek a little bit of advice or confidence is, would, would have been massively beneficial for me. It was not something that my parents or anyone I was around typically had an experience on. Yeah. So I was almost at times going in blind with a side for my agent. And again, there's obviously many ulterior motives that yeah. come with that. So definitely would have been really beneficial for me to have some kind of neutral, unbiased. Well, again, uh, someone who's probably lived that journey yeah. as well as enforcing, right? They have to exactly. have football, football. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. That, that's the thing, again, being, having some kind of like genuine authenticity, which you kind of know understands that process. Again, as an athlete, you're used to getting advice from everyone and anyone, right? You go to a supermarket, yeah. everyone's, got everyone's telling you what you should have done, what you should have done, where you should go. Everyone has an opinion, yeah. but I think you never, as an athlete, you never really, you never really take these things uh, fully because you know, okay, I appreciate you, yeah. but you don't quite understand. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it kind of goes over your head, whereas having, having that, uh, that authentic, genuine, support of, of someone who's kind of been through that process would have been massively beneficial for me, yeah. Good. And then I guess we're going to go right back to this identity thing that we've talked about numerous times through this interview so far, where you're at now, and the struggles with your identity through your career, and the, I guess, the reveal that you had recently, and how that's panned out, and how that was sort of managed through your career as well, how you dealt with that as a, as a professional athlete. It's, it's an interesting story. Yeah. Um, that, for me, again, it, it coincided with a lot of things that emotionally, um, mentally, would, became difficult for me yeah. as an athlete. I think um, most people, I think at a certain age, they struggle with a little bit of self-identity and acceptance and, and kind of who am I. And for some, some people, it's a little bit more clearer. Um, for myself, I was still kind of trying to figure that out whilst playing, yeah. Yeah. which, again, was super overwhelming. Um, and I got to a point later on in my career where I was, it was becoming a, an, it was almost a snowball effect. It yeah. was kind of getting bigger. As people start, your friend circle start to evolve, yeah. start you know, being married and having yeah. children and settling down in certain areas. As an athlete, you can almost hide behind it because yeah. you're always on the move. You're yeah. always married to your sport. So it, it protected me for a long time. Mm-hmm. When I fully understood who I was, um, it was, it was a pretty daunting process for me. You know, self acceptance. Sure. But I, I, I broke my skull shortly after it, yeah. which in a way is almost like a, it, I kind of describe it as a beautiful nightmare. Yeah. In that it set me free. I definitely wouldn't want to go through it again. Oh, yeah, um, but it set me free. It took me out of an environment which I didn't think was fully conducive for me to really embrace and understand who I was. Yeah. Um, which is a shame when I when I think about Absolutely. it now. It's, I mean, I guess again, if we're talking about support and advice and creating this safe place yeah. for people that was an area for me which I, I think felt was massively on the surface yeah. as well which I think still is but yeah. for me it, it kind of added to that amplified the fact that there was nothing really there and I just kind of ran yeah. um, again it was a look back on it and almost been a blessing which is quite sad thinking you have to come away from the thing you love the most in order to, to really understand who you are yeah. Um, but that is generally, generally the case. So now I'm, I'm super happy and content, and I'm, you know, I, I know who I am, I know yeah. what I want, and I know where I'm going. And, which for me, I guess, is where I felt this sense of power. Yeah. You know, I really began to take control of the things I, I want to do and the things I'm going to do. And, but yeah, again, it was a difficult process and a difficult journey, which, which took me a long time. And, coincide with many other emotions which you experience as an athlete right like, yeah. it kind of amplified that so lucky I came out of it the other side but definitely at times would have been beneficial to have some kind of yeah, outlet or just somebody to bounce things off and I guess it's that trust as well yeah. you know, we've spoken about it for me you're an inspirational figure for athletes in general with what you're doing now how you've transitioned out of the game you use the skill set as a footballer to, to be an extremely successful entrepreneur but also your identity and the way you manage that and uh, have the confidence to instill this in. And I'm sure there's many of the young footballers who've gone through similar battles and athletes of uh, all, all sports that go through similar stuff and yeah, it really is inspirational. Um, so just to touch finally on the skill set you learn as a footballer. So now, I don't know many people as successful as you, how you've made that transition across. Um, 
not say I'll give you a big, big read that I've already done, <laughs> but there's not many people that transition as well out of football and transferred into business like you have. If you could give me, tell us what number on it, but three major skills you developed as a footballer and you've now taken into your business world and how they transfer across and the, I guess the importance of that in, in business. Yeah, I think one of the biggest, firstly as an athlete, I think everything I'm doing now is, was, it was developed as an athlete. Um, so many characteristics and personality traits that I think successful businessmen, um, founders, co-founders, even employees yeah. of, all, of all levels, I think you learn these skills around people and, and, and experiences. And for me, that was massively important. I think um, work, teamwork, working yeah. on a team, you know, uh, as, a, as a business owner now, typically the success we've had has been built around people. Yeah. Um, and so kind of building teams, uh, identifying individuals, I think this is something I learned as an athlete. Going on from that, yeah. knowing how to build a team, I think knowing how to motivate. Yeah. So, for example, as an athlete, sometimes you come across people who need to be really tall. Yeah. You're like, you're not, you're not doing your job. Yeah. I need more from you. Yeah. And then sometimes you, there's people who need an arm around. You know, you can't be the same way with everyone. So understanding how people are motivated, how that is massive. Exactly right. I think this is a massively important skill yeah. as, a, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, yeah. knowing how to motivate your employees, your co-founders, um, knowing how to get the best out of everyone around you yeah. for one goal while pushing yeah. the same direction. So these, I think knowing how, learning how to, how to work effectively on a team, yeah. how to motivate individuals and the dynamic of each individual yeah. person, how different they are. Um, and I think thirdly, I, I think you learn about perseverance, you know, there's many things you get as an athlete, you know, sacrifice, dedication, yeah. there's many of these characteristics, but I think perseverance is, as an athlete, you're constantly in this space, which is very vulnerable, yeah. you're either, you can be a villain, or yeah. you can be a hero, yeah. in the split, space of a split second, and, and when it's over, you know, it's very short-sighted, that the next game, it all yeah. comes around again, so you get used to being in this space where you constantly judge, but constantly having to prove yourself, constantly having to work through small adversities yeah. which in the end kind of make the big, big picture. But as, as a business owner, it's no different. Yeah, exactly. You're constantly putting out fires. 90% yeah. of what I do uh, is putting out fires. <laughs> and then knowing how to deal with, deal with these things, I think remaining in this middle ground, not get too carried away, but also not, you know, it's not the end of the world yeah. when things go wrong. So having that middle ground of emotion is, is really important as well, but yeah, just understanding that you know today it might go your way, tomorrow it might not, but you know just keep going, you know, keep ticking off these these small goals. So yeah, I learned many things as an athlete. I'm super grateful for my for my experience and my you know my learnings as an athlete, which have massively influenced me into the person I am today and the things I'm doing today. So yeah, really grateful for that process. Perfect. Thank you very much, mate. Yeah. Thanks, chat. Cheers, man. Cheers, bud. Thank you, mate.